In 1957, right off Maine's coast, the movie kicks off. Picture this. A boat's trapped in a wild storm out at sea and the captain's calling for aid. Out of nowhere. This blinding flash streaks across the sky, plunging into the ocean. The captain's trying to steady his boat when he sees these two colossal rays of light, looking just like eyes. His boat flips, and he smashes right onto the rocks. Hogarth, this little kid, rides his bike to where his mom's at, carrying this box with a squirrel inside. He starts yapping to her about keeping the squirrel at home, and though she's not too thrilled, she gives in. But then, lo and behold, the box is open, and the squirrel's made a run for it. Hogarth spots it booking it towards this booth and tries to grab the attention of the guy sitting there. Suddenly, Dean wakes up all startled, and Hogarth's begging him not to make a fuss about his pet squirrel. Over at the next table, Captain Earl starts spouting something about seeing a satellite or maybe even Martians, but his butt is just crack up at him. Dean, maybe feeling sorry, goes along with it, and Hogarth's all hyped, wanting to know more. Hogarth's mom's all, Dean, Hogarth bothering you. Next thing you know, the squirrel's scaling up Dean's pants, sending him into a frenzy. Dean loses it, sets the squirrel free, chaos in the joint. Hogarth catches flack and gets told to split. Later on, he's chilling, watching some scary flick when he hears this weird noise outside. Goes to check, bam, TV's blank. He scales a tree to fix the antenna and clocks signs of trouble, maybe invaders. Straps a flashlight to his piece and bolts into the woods. Finds wrecked trees, snapped branches, follows these bursts of light and crackling energy. Hits up this power station, then out of nowhere, this massive robot's behind him. Things chomping on metal, gets zapped by the cables. Hogarth flips the switch, shuts the plant down, saves the bot, but it takes a dive. Meanwhile, Hogarth's mom's on the hunt for him. Hogarth scales that robot's noggin, drops a rock, and bam, the thing's buzzing. He bolts toward his mom's ride pulling up. She grabs him up, then lays into him for vanishing like that. Tries telling her about the mammoth metal bot, but she's not having any of it. Next day, kids are yakking about Earl's boat and the meteor. Hogarth spills about the robot, but they're giving him the cold shoulder. Floyd, the farmer, unloads his wrecked tractor with those giant bites. Kent Manley from the Unexplained Phenomenon crew hits up Marv Loach, the power plant boss. Marv's clueless, staring at this twisted tower, chewed up by some massive critter. Kent's grilling him about witnesses, and Marv tosses over Hogarth's busted piece. Kent heads back to his ride, only to find it half-devoured. He bolts to Marv, and before you know it, the robot snatches the rest of the car. He's going on about the wreckage to Marv, but poof, the car's vanished. Hogarth drags a metal sheet for the bot, hollers in the woods, sets it against a rock, camera ready. Dozes off, wakes up with the robot lurking. Freaks, dashes off, smacks his head on a branch. Robot tails him, starts copying his moves. Hogarth clocks that this giant ain't out to harm him and figures out the big guy knows he saved him. Tries shooting the breeze, asks if he can chat. Robot moves his jaw, but all that comes out's a crunch. Starts schooling him on rock and tree. Robot belts out the words, and Hogarth's over the moon. Kent's tipping off the mare, and the crew that something funky's going down in the woods. Hogarth clocks he's running late, frets his mom's gonna flip. Tells the robot to chill and bounces. But guess what? The bot tails him, and they hit up a train track. Hogarth's begging the bot to hang tight, but it starts munching on the line. Hogarth's mind's blown, trying to signal the bot to put it back. Bot pops it in place, but it's dragging to get it connected. Then a train smashes into its noggin, limbs flying all over. Hogarth, seeing red, knows they're in deep trouble, so he schleps the bot home, parts trailing behind. He's posted up in the barn, watching the bot's pieces piece themselves back. Says his goodbyes. Bot does too only to notice it's missing a hand. A call about the accident hits the mayor's office, and Kent takes off. The train conductor tells him he smacked into this huge metal fella. Kent asks where he can grab a phone, and the conductor gestures towards Hogarth's spot. Hogarth spots the missing hand in their kitchen. He maneuvers through Grace and steers his mother away. He tries to lug the hand outside, but all of a sudden, the doorbell goes off. He answers, and Kent introduces himself. He quickly closes it, but notices the hand's disappeared. Hogarth swings the door open again and Kent asks if he can use the phone. He rings his boss but gets blown off. Boss wants proof, and that ticks Kent off. He speeds off in his car but then spots Hogarth's initials on the gun. Kent does a quick reverse back to the house. Hogarth spots the hand in the bathroom and tries to shove it out. Ma and Kent bang on his door, and Annie spills about the giant robot Hogarth was gabbing about. He starts making weird strained sounds, and Kent thinks he's sick. Hogarth pushes the hand out, and Ma barges in the bathroom. Kent gets suspicious and splits. The robot gets hungry, so they head to McScoppin's scrapyard. The robot starts chomping on a car, but then its horn goes off. Dean steps out and spots the robot. He gets scared, but Hogarth calms him down. Hogarth pleads with him to let the robot crash for the night as Dean lounges on his couch. Hogarth gets back home and finds out Kent snagged the spare room. Dean calls Hogarth, but he's stuck dealing with Kent thanks to his mother. Kent keeps bombarding him with questions and goes on about feeling unsafe with Sputnik and foreign stuff. 
He tries to take charge, but Hogarth slips some laxative in his milkshake. Kent rushes to the bathroom, and Hogarth bolts. He reaches the scrapyard and finds Dean doing crafts with the robot. Hogarth messes around with cars and takes a swim in the lake. The lake spills half its water as the robot mimics him, drenching everyone nearby. Meanwhile, Kent discovers Hogarth's camera in the woods. He develops the pictures and finds one with the robot captured. The robot sees a deer, then it gets shot. Hogarth educates it about guns, and its eyes oddly turn red. Once its eyes return to normal, Hogarth teaches it about death and souls. He explains souls don't vanish, and he's got one too. Hogarth gets back and faces Kent. He explains his mom's work in late, and they need to talk. As Hogarth questions the colossal metal fella, it threatens to take his mom away. Totally spooked, Hogarth spills the scrapyard's location. Kent knocks him out cold with chloroform. Hogarth wakes up to Kent on the line with the army, saying they're coming tomorrow. Trying to slip away, he smacks into Kent. He slides into bed, and Kent claims he's watching all night. Hogarth pops on a helmet, turns away in bed. Kent dozes after 3 a.m., jolts awake later, and sees Hogarth's gone. The army shows up, heads to the scrapyard. Dean leads them to the barn, where the giant robots disguised with scraps and metal like a showpiece. The big boss blows his lid at Kent, orders him back to Washington. While fooling around with the bot, Hogarth casts him as the bad guy, sends the bot in a tizzy, claiming he's Superman. Hogarth aims a toy gun, ducks to fix it up. Bot's eye goes red, zaps a car with a laser beam, melting it. Dean clocks the danger and yanks Hogarth aside, lays into the bot, snaps it back to reality. Bot's all confused, bolts. Hogarth's on the chase, and Dean checks out the gun, realizing it was all about self-defense. Dean hops on his bike, scoops up Hogarth, and they dash to the robot, clocked by the school crew. Kids slip up, end up dangling from the roof, frantic to get a peek, hollering for help. Giant catches their cries, leaps over to M, scoops M up safe and sound. Townsfolk catch on, realizing he's all about peace. Kent spots the giant, scurries back with the army. Giant grabs Hogarth but gets ambushed by the army. Dean schools Kent, says it's all self-defense, and Hogarth's on his side. Kent spins the general with some misinformation, and boom, he calls in the fighter jets. The big guy takes a spill while sprinting, but suddenly, his kicks morph into jet engines, and off he goes, soaring. They start firing at him, his peepers going all fiery, but somehow, he keeps his cool. Dodges those jets but catches a hit from a tank. Goes down, army swarms in. Hogarth blacks out, and that sets the big guy off. He's blasting tanks, jeeps, turns into a full-on war machine. Dean and Annie whisk him away, while the general's calling for battleships to let loose. Kent's advising the general to bomb the town. Hogarth wakes up, bolts out of the car to help the big guy. The big boss calls for the bomb prep, but Annie hollers that Hogarth's right there with the big guy. Hogarth gets a grip on the giant, tells him he's gotta prove he's a good dude. Dean tells the general it's all about self-defense for the giant, but Kent's pushing to take it down. Hogarth steps up with the giant, begs him not to fire, but Kent's pushing the Nautilus to launch that missile. The general lays it out for Kent, that missile's heading their way, town's going down in flames. Kent tries to bolt in a car, but the big guy blocks him. Standing among all these people, the giant figures he's gotta rescue him. Says he'll sort it out, tells Hogarth to hang back. Giant takes off, smashes into that missile, feeling like a real Superman. Town's celebrating, but Hogarth's feeling low. Later on, Dean and Annie hook up, checking out the Iron Giant statue Dean whipped up. Dean hands Hogarth a package from the general, a tiny screw salvaged from the giant. When night falls, that little screw starts glowing and making moves. Hogarth's thrilled, lets it loose. The camera cruises through different bits, and lo and behold, the giant's head springs to life in Iceland. Cue the credits. That's the rundown on the movie, hope you dug it. Drop a comment about your favorite bit, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Catch you next time on Movie Recap Corner.